Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hi, John. <laughs> Welcome, everybody, to our Thursday edition of Unfiltered, A Random Moment with Pastor David. You know, our last, uh, our last time that we met on Tuesday was uh, just some of the things I've been thinking about. And then hearing your message last night uh, on Paul's prayer. And this is not what I want to talk about, but on Thursdays we focus on on the spiritual aspect. And, and you know, thinking about your message last week with unbelief, and then your message last night in Ephesians with Paul's prayer for this reason, it kind of stirred some things up in me. And, and we had a conversation earlier about the, the how-tos that you do when you are putting together a study. Uh -huh. And <clears throat> I like what you talked about your approach for this Sunday's message, where you're, you spoke about the man who had an unbelief in his son being healed by Jesus. He even asked Jesus, help me with my unbelief. Yeah. So heartfelt. Because so many situations, I'm sure, even with myself, the unbelief that I've had in things. But then this week, you're going to be speaking about humility. Yeah. So we had faith last week, humility this week. How do we reconcile those two things well, those, together? Those are two basic <coughs> aspects that, as we look at it unfolding in the Gospel of Mark. Those are two basic aspects of ministry that anybody who's serving the Lord needs to needs to grasp, needs to um, develop and understand. So in the context of what's taking place in Mark, Jesus is ministering to his men in the last few months that he'll be on the face of the earth. So his men are going to be entrusted with the gospel message and are intended to take that message throughout the world. And so because of that, he begins to in the ninth chapter of Mark especially, we see this. He begins to focus his attention on his men so that he can develop them into the best leaders and communicators of his message that, that, that is possible. And so, though he continues to minister to people, several times you'll see him returning and talking to groups of people and all, he really begins to specifically uh, pour into them things that matter and so as it relates to faith um, he he wanted them to know and we saw this last time that uh, that that they need to ex exercise faith in their ministry because they had um, failed to cast a demon out of a, uh, a severely demonized young boy and um, they they had relied on previous experience and weren't aware of the fact that every spiritual battle may have a new kind of uh, a new kind of um, context and all of that. So we saw that that faith that he was speaking to them about, and it's because he spoke to them and he said, "How long shall I suffer you?" He wasn't speaking necessarily to those who were around. What did they have to do with this? It was more his men who had remained behind while he was up there on the mountain and the transfiguration was taking place. It was more the men who had remained behind who had failed to exercise the authority and faith that he had given to them. And that's why he was speaking to them. Why? Because these are men who are going to be used by, by, by him to be the building blocks of something new called the church, right? So that's what we looked at last time. But if you're going to be a person of faith, you also need to be a person with humility. And so on the road, as they're together after this event with this, uh, this boy and the unbelieving father, they begin to argue amongst themselves while on the road. And they're coming from the Caesarea Philippi area, which is to the north, and they're walking down towards Capernaum, which is a two, perhaps three-day journey. It'd be around 50 miles or so. That gives them plenty of time to spend time with each other and they disputed, they argued, they had a prolonged argument <laughs> concerning who's the greatest. And so on the one aspect, these need to be men of faith. On the other, they need to be men of humility because when you're, you're arguing amongst yourselves who is the greatest, uh, it's revealing a, a severe um, interest in, in yourself over <laughs> others, right? I mean, you have the, you had Peter making a confession and Jesus commending him. You are Peter upon this rock, I'll build my church. 
Then you have three guys going up for uh, three guys going up to the Mount Transfiguration, experiencing some supernatural revelation of Christ, and naturally they're going to be thinking themselves to be the greatest, you know, the elder, the 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 larger one. And so you've got this argument going on amongst these men, and and in ministry, the greatest in the kingdom is the servant of Hull. In the ministry. Uh, the least in the kingdom is what the Lord commends. And so they need to learn humility, the lesson of humility. And uh, I believe that in our day, but this isn't new, but in our day, there are quite a number of, of quote-unquote ministers or pastors or TV expositors or whatever, mega church pastors sometimes, unfortunately, but it's not just mega church pastors who can deal with this who actually think of themselves as the greatest. And, and they'll have a, a flock there who tell them they are, who just boost them and tell them and promote them. You're the best. You, you know so many things. Oh, I follow you, you know. And there's no difference in the attitude of sometimes fellow pastors uh, than you found in the in the lives of of the apostles, right? And so... Jesus has to speak to them. I, I remember years ago, I was in high school at the time, so it's been many years ago. Um, we were having, in our physical ed class, we had to swim, and um, I was no swimmer, so I I was just with some friends just hanging in the shallow end of the pool. We just kind of <laughs> hung around and visited. And I, I can still remember, though, a freshman, a young man, I was probably a junior or a senior at the time, but a, a young kid, standing on the uh, high dive and he was at the edge of the board and he was yelling to the coach and I'll, I always will remember how he was saying, coach, look at me, I'm going to jump. Coach, look at me, I'm going to jump. The coach um, coach was uh, was not paying attention to him. He had other things he had to do. But this, this young boy kept on crying out, look at me, I'm going to jump until the coach finally turned to look at him and then he jumped. And I've never forgotten that as I thought, what a it's sad, as I'm older now, to realize that this little guy had such a great need to be seen to do something he thought was important. I see the same thing sometimes, and I, I say this with just a true, honest kind of statement. Uh, I see the same thing sometimes in pastors. Hey, church, look at me. I'm going to jump, and then everybody turns to look at him as he jumps. Oh, you're magnificent. You did some great thing, and then pat him on the back, and off he goes. And what we're doing is we're destroying a man rather than building him up because pride leads to destruction. And ultimately, these great moments will end in humiliation later on. Mm -hmm. And so instead of us building up men as if they're so important, we need to really uh, encourage them to remain humble. And that doesn't mean by walking up to them and saying, you're too proud. That means praying for them and loving them and encouraging them in, in a biblical way uh, so that he realizes that these people trust him as a spiritual leader, not a hero. There's a difference. I don't want to be somebody's hero. I am one person's hero, and that is my wife's hero. I want to be my children's hero in the sense that they say my dad is a good man and does things for the right reasons. But I don't necessarily want to be my church's hero. They need to know Jesus is theirs and it should they be married that their, their husband will say and all of that. You know, I mean it like that. But I certainly don't want to come and give the adventures of David every Sunday, <laughs> the things that I do and what I've accomplished and I'm the greatest in the kingdom because Jesus made it very clear that uh, to be the servant of all is to be the greatest. Well, Pastor, thank you so much for that because we do see that faith and humility do, do oh, go, they go and together. And, and Jesus was teaching them a valuable lesson. Mm -hmm. You know, they were uh, been commissioned by him to go out and cast out demons and do ministry. And mm -hmm. Yeah, here comes this man. And what a great way that Jesus instructs us as well. You know, he'll take us through those times. But he was ultimately doing it to show them what the true message of the kingdom well, is. Well, they without him cannot do a thing. They couldn't cast out the demon. I mean, when Jesus came and he argued with the uh, the uh, religious leaders there, 
what are you disputing with them about? Um, and then he he calls and says, bring him to me. Um, no, these men could not do anything without him. And his presence needed to be there to show them that he was with them. But any authority that they exercised was derived from him. And if we as ministers don't understand that, John, we begin to take credit for the work that God himself did. And I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory I will give to no one else, neither my praise to graven images. God does not give his glory to anyone else. And one of the worst things that we can do is to try and steal his glory. Well, church family, I mean, you've heard it. <laughs> uh, want to come out and, and have you listen to this? I mean, come out to church and hear this message. It's going to be... It's a great passage of scripture. Yes. I mean, we can go on, but for the sake of time, come on out. Our church, our, our time is at 8.30 and 10.45 on Sunday. Uh, as we're teasing out, Pastor David's taking us through the book of Mark. And invite a friend. Uh, it's a great opportunity to get together and worship. Amen. Spend time in God's word and in fellowship. So Amen. we invite you guys to come on out. Pastor, thank you so much. Of course. And uh, church family, thank you for tuning in. And God bless you.